Okay. Beep, beep! Beep, beep! Beep, beep! Beep, beep! Hello, and welcome to Confessions of a Taxi Driver by Sarah Huggett. This performance has been made in response to conversations Sarah's had with taxi drivers and taxi users. It uses elements of the Basin Theatre amongst satirising this information. It is not to be confused with the Confessions of Soft Porn series. <laughs> Please, can you turn off your, phone, your mobile phones? Can we have tutors first, followed by, by VIP guest stars Mrs. Huggins and Vicky? <laughs> That this is to be followed by Rosie, Sarah's friends, third years, second years, and first years. Aww. Sarah hasn't got any friends, we're all right Work nights, not worth the risk. My friend, also a taxi driver, picked up a group of men at night, stabbed him through the back of the chair, blood sticking out of his stomach. Five hours later, they found him dead. God, God does not want you to die. He gives you a body and a spirit, and you have to look after it. I have no salt, no sugar. No oil for the last 40 years. Yes, 40 years. I'm over 80. Only boiled food. Boiled banana, apple, vegetable, tapioca. All only boiled. Everything nature. I have no pain, no cough, no cold. I have nothing that will harm me. My friends, we go out, they drink and get drunk. I just laugh and <laughs> sing along with them. <laughs> they don't notice. <laughs> you have to look after the body you have. But I'm not a chef. I can't tell you you can't put potatoes in the curry. You must live your life. I do not want to leave the world before my time. I've seen it all, some you wouldn't believe. One man went to the toilet in my car. It's true, you wouldn't believe. I have people laugh, cry, sleeping, beaten up. I've had people late for weddings. What do I then? I just drive fast. <laughs> some people don't pay. 
you never know who you're picking up. That's the scary bit of the job. But us taxi drivers are the most important people for the city. We work in snow, in rain. We pick people up from the airport when they first arrive in the country. We are the first people they meet. We get asked all the questions. We make the first impressions of England. Having to make sure the customer is comfortable, have remembered passports, you don't realise how important we are. Maybe just relax. Because what I'm going to do is important. What I'm going to do might change your life. What I'm going to do is not important. <laughs> Thank you for, com to co for coming to today's meeting. Would any newcomers like to introduce themselves? Hi. My name's Sophie, and I'm a taxi driver. Hi, <laughs> Sophie. <laughs> Would you like to share why you're here with the group today? So, I'm a taxi driver, and I've been struggling to come to terms with some of my missed opportunities. My biggest struggle is that I could have rid the world of Nigel Farage and no one would have known. It was a few years ago, he'd just been on question time and I was driving him back from Kent and it was a few hours drive and he said he was tired and going to go to sleep and... It's okay Sophie, we're doing really, really well. <laughs> <laughs> so, he did go to sleep, he was asleep a couple of hours actually and he asked if I'd wake him up on one of the bridges along the way and I did wake him up. Um, but, just imagine, what if I'd driven up a bridge, or even just reversed into a wall? I could have rid the world of Nigel Farage. I, I'm not saying I regret it, but there might have never been a Brexit party. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that with the group. Would anyone like to say anything to reflect on Sophie's story? Hi, I'm Lydia. And I'm a taxi driver. Hi, Olivia. I just want to say, Sophie, I found that so interesting. It is clear that you were willing to take risks. But I'm so glad that you're still here with us today, because we can find other ways to bring power to the people. Thank you, Lydia. <laughs> I have been a licensed driver for 27 years now and enjoyed every minute of it. When I first started my driving, you could take someone to the airport for three pound. You could also buy seven bags of shopping from the supermarket for the same price. The prices have gone up so high, but people are still managing to spend the money. I came to England from India in 1950 I worked for the armed forces before I was a driver. At that time, when I worked for the company, everyone spoke in English. I was the only Gujarati driver I know. Even when I pick up Gujarati children up from the airport, they still prefer to speak in English. I worked hard and paid my taxes and never claimed any money from the government. I know some drivers who don't pay taxes and that's not on. You need to look after where you live and give back to the community. You have to be clean and pay your taxes so you can benefit the economy of the country. For example, if I came to your house for a tea and I put my feet on the table, you're not going to like it. You're probably going to kick me out of the house. <laughs> If you stay true and honest and law-abiding citizen, you can never do anything wrong if it's right. 
then you will always be okay and fine. But today is about partnership. You help one another, you make your own decision, but everything will only work in a partnership. But nowadays, it is very difficult to work in the partnership because the people are becoming very, very selfish and they are only looking after for themselves and what benefits them. Thank you. Some people think I look cool, and I do look cool. <laughs> <laughs> For 
but really it's the easy access when I turn corners and the stuff like gets in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> side of the bridge railings. Thought maybe this was the girl I was supposed to be picking up. Shouted the name and she looked. She was crying. She was gonna jump into the river. I left my car in the middle of the road. I said, look, you can have my phone, my wallet, my money, but please, please come back to this side. And she wouldn't. So I went over and her. Grabbed hold of her to stop her jumping in. I shouted for help. No one stopped. Whether it looked like I was stopping her from jumping or even if it looked like I was holding her over the river, no one stopped. I prayed to God. And a few seconds later, someone had called an ambulance and it showed up. See? We aren't bad people. A lot of us are good people. I don't know why some people think we're bad people. Bad people can be teachers. Bad people can be shopkeepers. We are not all bad people. We make sure you get home safe. We drive safe. Sorry, 
three, that was my boyfriend, ex boyfriend. He's been messaging with a girl called Becky. <laughs> and he wants me to go over, but I don't care. And it's his birthday, but I'm just going to return all his presents. Alright, um, seems like you need to think things through. Don't be putting yourself second best. I'm not, I'm not second best. He's calling me again. What do you want now? I've already told you I'm not coming over. Kit. <coughs> well, it was going to be red velvet, but now I'm going to tell your mum to get you a carrot cake on. Because I know you don't like carrot cake. Well, I didn't like you messaging Becky, but we'd always get what we want. <laughs> <laughs> fluctuates so much. You can go to the hospital and pick someone up. This person has found out they're going to be a parent. They're so happy, so excited. Then you go back to the hospital and pick someone else up. This person's mother has just died. They're heartbroken. We are here to celebrate with you and also to console. Sometimes you get the woman with the dog. Her dog makes a hairy mess in your car. She leaves. Later you get the same woman without a dog and she moans your car is dirty. I've been nice and let her in with the dog, and then she comes back and complains. Can't win. And sometimes you get the drunks, and that's okay. You think you can sing like, sing like Rihanna, and I don't mind, but you really can't sing like Rihanna. <laughs> See, life is like a sack of oranges. All the nice oranges, but then you get the one bad one. If you keep the bad one, it will cause all the good ones to go bad and bitter. You need to let go of the little bad things in life and keep the good. Every time I'd see a penny on the floor, I'd pick it up. I'd ask people in shop queues if they had a spare penny. I'd ask for spare change for the car parking tickets. <coughs> I'd steal pennies from wishing wells, rob a bank, pickpocket in the street. I would steal as much money as I could. And I would hide it. Until there was a national economic crisis. Everyone would be struggling. In the hope that people would be nice to each other with no incentive. Eventually I'd give the money back. Penny by penny. Just one person at a time. No rich, no poor. Everyone the same. Everyone equal. In the hope that people would be kind to each other with no incentive. <coughs> If I could change the world for one day, I'd just take away all the money. 
Would people be nicer to each other without expecting anything in return? No incentive, nothing to gain. First, I would stop all fat people eating McDonald's. Then eventually, the chain will shut down. This will force people to eat more healthy. Eating healthier tends to be more expensive. With a cheeseburger costing 99 pence, but a pan of raspberries, two pounds. With the rising love of fruit and vegetables. Hopefully we can start growing them in our gardens. If I was to grow fruit on a tree, I could give that fruit to people who need it. If I could change the world for one day, I would give everyone enough to survive. <laughs> First, I would start by getting rid of everyone who annoys me. <laughs> Repeat after me. Have you been busy today? Have you been busy today? <laughs> Repeat after me. <clears throat> Can I bring my dog in your car? Can I bring my dog in your car? <laughs> I can't believe how bad the traffic is today. I can't believe how bad the traffic is today. <laughs> <laughs> Repeat after me. I am an Uber driver. I am an Uber driver. <laughs> <laughs> now, I can live a happier life. <laughs> <laughs> As more people annoy me, I'll make more people disappear. <laughs> With my tolerance for finding people annoying me, the population will rapidly decrease. <laughs> <laughs> we are all here to die. We are all going to die for the changing climate. If I could change the world for one day, I would get rid of everyone, make everyone be greener, cleaner and healthier. We are all going to die. <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming to today's meeting. Thank you to those who have shared their story. Now I know we've all been struggling with the right people. So I think it's really appropriate that we see our workers to help get these emotions out. <laughs> if you can pick the words up, feel free to do it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 